The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. You know that the word has many meanings to it, but which meaning do you use in the right situation? Let's take a look together. Many ideological disagreements could be saved if we reach a correct definition for some of the words that are the subject of disagreement. For example, what is the correct definition of the word freedom? Does it mean one does whatever he likes without control? Or does it mean one should act freely but should not violate the freedom of others or break the general order? If we realize that the last definition is acceptable, then we get into another definition, that is, the conditions mentioned before, would they be considered limits of the freedom or restraints? If we consider it restraints, then there would not be disagreement about the meaning of freedom. Two, another matter needs scrutiny and understanding, that is, what is the correct definition of obedience? Is it blind obedience? Some confession fathers enforce obedience that abolishes the personality of the confessor. They do not give him a chance to discuss what is said to him. They might consider such a discussion as a kind of insolence. Then he will do what is not accepted by his thought or by his conscience. We do not accept the obedience that the conscience turns against because we ought to obey God rather than men. Obedience then is necessary, but within God's commandments, the discussion between the follower and the guide should not be considered as insolence. A third point. Disagreements arise in the subject of faith and deeds due to the definition. If we understand the meaning of deeds, the disagreement will dissolve. Are they the deeds before the faith or the deeds of the law or the human hand or these deeds are in communion with the Holy Spirit after faith? Also, what is faith? Is it the one who works with love? Another point is man. The name itself needs to be defined and many matters depend on this definition. If we realize that man is a living creature with an immortal soul and that his life extends after his death, then one should prepare himself for eternal life and respect his humanity. Therefore, he has to be defined as the image of God. Many other matters need to be defined, such as what is sin, what is pleasure, what is love. So when you define a word, make sure it is in the right context and not in your own dictionary of terms. Stay with us and let's look at the following message. Cast out the net. <clears throat> Very early in life, almost from birth, we are trained to be successful according to the world's definition of success. We are driven by goals and accomplishments from the day we take our first steps and ride our first bike. As we grow older, we are pressured to accumulate knowledge and things in order to prove our success. In our Christian walk, Jesus calls us to a new definition of success. One determined not by what we accomplish, but by our obedience. The disciples walked and talked with Jesus, but they still faced many challenges with faith and obedience. One morning, after fishing all night without a catch, Jesus called from the shore. John 21.6 said, He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some fish. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. 
The disciples were successful that morning, but we must understand that the large number of fish did not define their success. They would have been successful even if the nets remained empty. They were successful the moment they were obedient and threw out the nets. One thousand years earlier, King Saul was told to attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. But Saul allowed the Amalekite king and the best liable stock to survive. He tried to cover his disobedience by saying the calves and lambs were for a sacrifice to God. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in the burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. In any task we undertake for God, it's easy to become discouraged by our apparent lack of success. We often feel inadequate, and those feelings increase when our goals seem to be elusive. But we must remember the outcome of the task is secondary to our obedience. God doesn't need our fish. He wants our devotion and trust. He desires that we love Him with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. Let's take our eyes off the accomplishment of the catch and what we can produce. Rather, let's focus on walking each step according to His leading. Let's concentrate all our efforts on obeying His call to cast out the net. Amen. Let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, Father, in the wilderness of the Jordan, you sent a messenger to prepare people's hearts for the coming of your Son. Help me to hear his words and repent of my sins so that I may clearly see the way to walk, the truth to speak, and the life to live for him, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.